horror fans have heard of films such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silence of the Lambs, and Psycho as being touted as classic entries in the horror film genre. The real-life villain whose morbid experimentation led to the creation of some of horror's most iconic killers was known as Edward Theodore Gein. Ed Gein was a Wisconsin grave robber and body snatcher who gained widespread notoriety after authorities discovered he dug up over 40 corpses from his local cemeteries. On most visits, Gein would leave the graveyard empty-handed, but on several occasions, Gein dismembered the newly buried corpses to keep his trophies and souvenirs for his at-home projects and furnishings. Edward Theodore Gein was born on August 27, 1906 in La Crosse County, Wisconsin. His parents, George and Augusta Gein, were both natives of Wisconsin and had two sons, Henry and Ed. Henry George Gein was born first, followed by his younger brother, Eddie. Despite Augusta's growing hatred towards her husband, the marriage persisted because of the family's strong religious beliefs against divorce. Augusta Gein operated a small grocery store and eventually purchased a farm on the outskirts of Plainfield, Wisconsin. The farm and farmhouse would eventually become the Gein family's permanent home and the site for what is now known as the Gein Murder House. Augusta Gein allegedly moved to the quaint town of Plainfield to prevent outside secular influence on her sons. Ed Gein would only be allowed to leave his home in order to attend school and nowhere else. He spent most of his time doing chores on the family farm and helping out with whatever housework he could manage. Augusta Gein preached to her boys constantly about the immorality of the world, the evil of alcohol, and the belief that all women, herself excluded, were prostitutes and instruments of evil. She reserved time every afternoon to read passages from the Bible and would constantly recite graphic verses from the Old Testament dealing with death, murder, and divine retribution. Her religious fanaticism contributed greatly to the decline of both her and her children's mental health. As a child and teenager, Eddie Gein had naturally effeminate mannerisms and a shy demeanor. Unfortunately, these characteristics made Gein a target for various bullies in his town of Plainfield. Classmates and teachers recalled Eddie's awkward mannerisms and random bursts of laughter, usually only reacting to his own jokes. To make matters worse, his mother reprimanded him whenever he tried to make any new friends or acquaintances. Augusta often verbally abused her sons, believing that they were destined to become failures like their father. During their teen years and early adulthood, the boys remained detached from people outside of the farmstead and only had each other to keep one another company. After Ed's father, George Gein, died of a heart attack in 1940, the Gein's brothers began working at random jobs to help with expenses at home. Both brothers were considered reliable and honest by residents of the community. While both worked as handyman, Ed also frequently babysat for the neighbor's children. He enjoyed babysitting as he seemed to relate more easily to kids than to his own young adult peers. Ed's brother, Henry, began to question and reject his mother's distorted view of the world and became increasingly worried about his brother's unhealthy attachment to their deranged mother. This caused Ed to build up a lot of animosity towards Henry as their mother was Ed's close and only friend. On May 16, 1944, a brush fire broke out close to the Gein family farmhouse. Both Ed and Henry went out to extinguish the flames and were reportedly separated at the time of the ordeal. When the fire was extinguished, Ed reported his brother as missing to local authorities. Ed Gein told the police he had lost sight of his brother during their attempt to extinguish the flames. When a search party was organized, Gein was able to suspiciously lead the authorities directly to the location of his missing brother's lifeless body. This raised concern as authorities were attempting to determine the cause of death under the unusual circumstances the body was discovered. The surrounding area and ground on which Henry Gein was located was also untouched by fire. Henry had several bruises on his head that weren't consistent with typical injuries that involve fire and smoke. Despite the probable cause for concern, the police dismissed the possibility of homicide and the county coroner listed asphyxiation as the official cause of death for Henry Gein. Although some investigators suspected that Ed Gein killed his brother, no charges were ever filed against him for the murder of Henry. After his brother's death, Ed and his mother lived alone in the farmhouse for a period of one year. Augusta would toggle back and forth between berating Ed of being a useless failure and other times encouraging Ed to sleep in the same bed as her. This put into perspective the unhealthy obsession and attachment Ed had with his tyrannical mother. Augusta Gein was diagnosed with cancer and passed away on December 29, 1945. Ed lost his only friend, one true love, and was now completely alone in the world. This was the catalyst for Ed's criminal activity as his mental health became increasingly deranged after his mother's death. Gein left all rooms in his now empty house intact and unaltered, especially any rooms he closely associated with his mother, such as the sitting room and her bedroom. 
He boarded up various rooms frequently used by his mother, including the entire upstairs area, the downstairs parlor, and the living room. Gein confined himself mostly to the kitchen in a small utility room that he converted into a bedroom. He filled these two rooms with his reading materials, which consisted mostly of books on anatomy, cannibalism, cults, and war tragedies. It was around this time that he began to prowl the local cemeteries very late at night. He soon began reading various obituaries in the local paper to determine if there were any women that matched the physical characteristics of his mother. If he felt that a recently buried woman was a close physical match, Ed would dig up their grave and retrieve the body parts to take home for later use. Ed mostly favored older women, some of whom he knew vaguely, and normally went for plumper body types that reminded him mostly of his recently deceased mother. On November 16, 1957, Plainfield hardware store owner Bernice Warden mysteriously disappeared and local authorities had reasonable cause to suspect Ed Gein as the probable culprit. Warden's son had told investigators that Gein had been in the store the evening before her disappearance, saying Gein returned the following morning for a gallon of antifreeze. A sales invoice for a gallon of antifreeze was the last receipt written by Bernice Warden on the morning of her disappearance. The authorities obtained a warrant and immediately searched the premises. Upon further searching the house, authorities discovered harvested organs in the refrigerator, a human heart placed on the stove, and skulls that had been converted into soup bowls. Gein also used human skin to upholster various chairs in his home and was planning on constructing a full body human skin suit that would emulate his late mother. According to Gein, shortly after his mother's death, he wanted a sex change and began to create a female body human skin suit that would allow him to impersonate a female. Gein's practice of donning the tanned and stretched human skin of various women was described as an insane transvestite ritual. Authorities also discovered and documented the following items in Gein's home. Decapitated and saw off skulls on Ed's bedpost, Organs in the refrigerator. Nine masks made out of human skin. Bowls made from human skulls. Whole human bones and bone fragments scattered throughout the house. 10 decapitated human skulls with the top sawed off. Human skin used as tapestry to cover several chairs. A lampshade made from human facial skin. Nine vaginal genitals organized in a shoe box. A pair of lips on a drawstring meant to close and open window blinds. A belt made from human nipples. Bernice Warden's decapitated head and a burlap sack. And then Mary Hogan's decapitated head and a wooden box. Allegedly, there was also a necklace discovered on the premises that was composed entirely of over seven human tongues. The legitimacy of its existence has never been confirmed or proven. It was later determined Bernice Warden had been shot with a 22 caliber rifle, then had her torso carved and hollowed out, confirming Ed's bodysuit construction theories. Gein denied having sex with any of the bodies he exhumed as they, quote, smell too bad. During his interrogation, Gein also admitted to the death and shooting of Mary Hogan, the tavern operator who mysteriously vanished in 1954. 
After police found body parts belonging to both Mary and Bernice in his house, Gein confessed to killing the tavern owner in 1954. Gein also confessed to killing the Plainfield Hardware store owner in 1957. Some individuals believe that Gein may have potentially killed up to seven victims. The exact number of murder suspects is difficult to determine since Gein strategically dismembered the bodies of his murder victims and combined them with the corpses he stole from nearby cemeteries. Some of his other suspected victims included 51-year-old Eleanor Adams, 15-year-old Evelyn Hartley and eight-year-old Georgia Weckler. After dismembering his victims, Gein would transform the body parts into a variety of household furniture and clothing items. Gein used human lips as embellishments to curtain drawstrings, skin nipples were tanned and stretched to create human skin belts, and hand gloves were completely made out of thickened human skin, roughly stitched and woven together. Four detached noses and nine mutilated vaginal genitals were found dismembered in various boxes throughout the house. These artifacts were photographed at an on-site crime lab and were promptly destroyed out of respect for the victims' families. When questioned about his gruesome paraphernalia, Gein told investigators that between 1947 and 1952, he made as many as 40 nocturnal visits to three local graveyards to exhume recently buried bodies. On about 30 of those visits, Gein claims he had come out of what he calls a mental daze while in the cemetery and left home empty-handed. Ed managed to steal various female body parts from a total of 10 recently buried middle-aged women that he felt best resembled his mother. Gein admitted to tanning his victims' skinned off flesh in order to furnish and decorate miscellaneous rooms around his home. Authorities were uncertain as to how the lanky-bodied Gein was capable of single-handedly digging up a multitude of graves in a single evening. Authorities exhumed two of the graves Gein allegedly visited them and found them to be empty, thus corroborating Gein's confession. His farm attracted crowds of curiosity seekers before it burned down in 1958, most likely set in a blaze of fire by a vengeful arsonist. Following temporary confinement in a mental health facility, Gein was diagnosed with schizophrenia and was found mentally incompetent to stand trial. On November 21, 1957, Gein was charged with one count of first-degree murder in Washura County Court. Ed entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. Gein was sent to the Central State Hospital for the Criminally Insane, now known as the Dodge Correctional Institution. He was later transferred to the Mendota State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. In 1968, further developments in the case occurred when Gein's doctors determined Gein was mentally sound enough to confer with counsel and participate in his defense in the event of a trial. Ed Gein's trial began on November 7, 1968 and lasted a brief period of one week. A psychiatrist testified that Gein confessed during one of their sessions that he didn't know whether the killing of Bernice Warden was intentional or accidental. Gein claimed that he was examining a gun in Warden's store when he was trying to load a bullet into a rifle when it accidentally discharged and fatally wounded Warden. Gein claims he had not previously aimed the rifle at Warden and didn't remember any other events that happened later that morning. At the request of the defense, Gein's trial was held without a jury with Judge Robert H. Galmar presiding over the courtroom. On November 14, 1968, Judge Galmar made the controversial decision to only try and charge Ed Gein with one count of first-degree murder. Galmar is quoted saying, Due to prohibitive costs, Gein was tried for only one murder, that of Mrs. Bernice Warden. A second trial dealt with Gein's sanity, and after hearing testimonials by doctors for the prosecution and defense, Judge Galmor officially ruled Gein not guilty by reason of insanity. He ordered Gein to be committed to Central State Hospital for the criminally insane for the rest of his life. On July 26, 1984, Gein died of respiratory failure from lung cancer at the Mendota Mental Health Institute. His gravesite in the Plainfield Cemetery was frequently vandalized over the years by souvenir seekers and serial killer enthusiasts. These individuals chipped off pieces of his gravestone before the bulk of it was eventually stolen in 2000. The gravestone was successfully recovered in June 2001 from Seattle, Washington, after the Seattle Post reported that Angry White Mail Tour, a nationwide punk music summer tour, was including Gein's tombstone in their advertising promotions. Positive identification was made by comparing the previously documented graffiti and jagged edges chipped off of the confiscated item with Ed's tombstone. After a positive match was declared, the gravestone was returned to Plainfield, Wisconsin, but police weren't entirely sure how to resolve the situation. Washera County Sheriff Patrick Fox told the Stevens Point Journal, We could put the tombstone back in the cemetery, but it would only get stolen again. The final decision was made to transfer the tombstone to the aforementioned local Watama Museum located in Washera County, Wisconsin. With fewer than three murders legally attributed to his name, Ed Gein does not meet the conventional definition of a serial killer. Ed Gein is technically a grave-robbing, body-snatching transvestite with severe mental illness due to early childhood psychological abuse from his mother.
At the time of his death in 1984, Edward Eddie Theodore Gein was 77 years old.